All right, so welcome to Screen Time with today's Communique. So excited to have our guest with us today, Miss Wendy Bryant with Crunk Fit. We're going to talk all about fitness and all about Black women and starting businesses. But before we jump into our conversation, we want to give a special thank you and shout out to the Women's Foundation of Arkansas for sponsoring this segment and also the Women's Economic Mobility Hub. So special shout out and thank you to the Women's Foundation of Arkansas. So Ms. Bryant, thank you for joining us and welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here today. So before we jump into our conversation, why don't you tell everyone just a little bit about yourself and your career path? Well, um, as you've already stated, my name is Wendy Bryan, and I am a uh, fitness lover. I am a lover of movement, and uh, Crunk Fit is something that was formed out of my love for movement, my love for wanting to just do something that is whole body therapy. However, um, you know, not a lot of people want to do the the usual so I just kind of created something that was boot camp to a beat and so that's kind of where crunk fit um, came about and I am very happy to be able to share that with you today absolutely and so when you when we're talking about boot camp to a beat do you have to be um, rhythmically inclined <laughs> to, to move to the beat or can there be, you know, some of us who are not so uh, rhythmically inclined participate with crunk fit? Hey, anyone, if you can move, you can participate because it is built with different levels. So there are people who will do kind of a higher level. And then there are those that are just happy just to move, you know. Um, and one of my things that I always tell people is that there is no wrong movement. You know, you just try the best you can. And the fact that you're moving is a blessing. So you just use what you have and do what you that feels good and natural to you. Absolutely. Um, and speaking of moving, we know that COVID-19 um, kept us inside for the last two years. We're coming out of it. Um, hopefully we don't have to mask back up and, and go back inside. Um, for, we know that for these two years, um, a lot of us, again, were inside. And some of us use that time to um, use our home offices, our home spaces to kind of move around and stay physically active. But then there were others of us who chose to use that time um, to kind of hibernate and kind of do nothing. And so we're coming out of COVID-19. So what would you advise those of us who have been hibernating for the past two years, how would you um, advise us to get back into the rhythm of being physically active and being physically engaged? Well, one thing that I know is um, when COVID first came about, I think everyone and, and in the entire world thought they were about to get you know fit and sexy all of a sudden. So it was just this boom and, oh, I'm about to work out and do something at the house. But then, you know, the reality of not being able to go anywhere kind of set in. So you had things that compounded, such as depression. Um, and when we get depressed, uh, there was a lot of eating. And so you hear about that COVID-30 that people have put on during uh, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. However, um, as people are starting to get back out, you know, the first thing that I would say is as the weather is looking good, get out and enjoy the weather. Do something that you enjoy doing. Don't think that you have to just hop back in the gym and sweat it out on a treadmill or something. Go ride a bike with the family, you know, go take the kids out for a walk, you know, just do something that feels good. And then as you do that, you just move on to the next thing that feels good. And then the number one thing that I can say is find a supportive community. As uh, we were separated from each other for so long. So as you're getting back into fitness, find your community and the people that have the same goals that you have, the same values that you have. It doesn't have to be crunk fit. It could be anything. There are walking groups. There are running groups. Um, there are, you know, weightlifting groups, you know, so find your tribe and find your group that you want to get to and those people that you want to be around. And that's going to really help motivate you to keep those fitness goals. Absolutely. All of that, indeed. You, When you were talking, um, you mentioned something that I want to circle back to. You mentioned the fact that, you know, we, we've been inside for the last two years. And um, sometimes that 
that triggers depression in some people inside and not having that interaction with friends and family members that people are used to. So what role would you say that um, being physically active and being physically engaged plays in uh, mental health and depression? It definitely is a very important role. Uh, just a pure moment of transparency here. I started working out um, because of depression. I lost uh, my grandmother who was a very intricate role in my life and um, as well as my grandfather, he wasn't doing well. And then at that time, my daughter was a toddler. So it was a lot of stress going on and I was partaking in some very unhealthy habits uh, on a daily basis. And um, I really realized that soon I wasn't going to be there for my daughter if I didn't change some things about my my life then change things about my habits um, and but it's not always easy for everyone to just say okay I'm gonna change this and do something different so you know there is no problem whatsoever into um, talking to someone um, I think that anything that you can do to help increase your mental um, your mental um, positivity and your mental scope and mental aspect is going to be good that's talking to someone um, seek that professional counseling. And then and in addition to that, seek movement and anything physically that's going to help increase those endorphins, increase um, your uh, blood flow. All of these things are scientifically proven to make us feel better. So it doesn't have to be, like I said, sweating it out in the gym, but give some good conversation, find that community, have those conversations with those community as you're working out. And that will definitely help increase your mental positivity as you go along. And the main thing is consistency. You know, you're not going to just pop up and feel better after one walk and, you know, one talk. You wanna be consistent with us. As long as you're living, you're gonna have barriers that are going to pop up. So you have to address those as you move forward and keep those tools in your bag to address those, which are you know, talking to someone as well as movement and physical activity. Absolutely. Thank you for all of that, um, mentioning all of that. And we know that um, actually April is National Minority Health Month. And we know that in communities of color in um, particular, we have had um, some challenges in dealing with our mental health. So thank you for bringing that up. I, I appreciate that. And so uh, CrocFit has been um, officially a business uh, for, for a few years now. And so talk with us, if you will, for a moment, um, when you were getting started, um, was it an easy journey? Um, is it still an easy journey? Um, if there were any hiccups or bumps in the road, how did you get over those? Share with us for a few moments, if you will. Absolutely. Uh, easy journey is not the words that I would use <laughs> to describe the pathway of crunk fit. Um, I remember when I had my very first class, I had two people to show up and I was just excited for those two people, you know. Um, I uh, had to go through um, a lot of thinking of the model of my business, how I was going to do this, where I was going to do this. Um, you know, I'm not the, I love physical fitness. I'm not a very business minded, want to take your money type person. So I really had to learn financial uh, savviness. I really had to learn um, business uh, technique. I had to reach out to um, different areas that um, could help me get my business plan together, help me get business tools in my pocket so that I could do something and have a big, bigger reach for the audience that I wanted to reach. So um, no, it, there was definitely hiccups in the road, bumps in the road. Um, I started Crunk Fit in one particular spot. It ended up expanding to three different locations. And then COVID hit, that took it all the way back down to the house. And I tell you, um, I, um, at that time, that was the first time that I thought, oh, well, well, it was a good run and good crunk fit was great. So I guess that's it. You know, I'm thinking that that was basically the end of my business. But then I had people reaching out saying, hey, are you going to do anything online or, you know, and I hadn't thought of it, but I guess I could. It took me 24 hours to get set up to be online. And I'll tell you from the moment that I started crunk fit till right now today, I have never had a class where there was not any participants. There is someone always showing up ready to work out.
So um, that is what keeps me going. Um, I don't care if it's one person, their one body matters. Uh, if it's 10 people, all 10 bodies matter. You know, it doesn't matter who is there. There are there, an individual person that's there for their own reason, and I am going to be there to help them do that. So it's, um, you know, the people that come and the people that I meet and knowing their reasons and their why for being there is the reason that um, it's easy for me to do this and easy for me to get up and get going and want to be there for them. Um, they feed me just as much as I feed them. I love that. <laughs> I love that. So in essence, um, COVID-19 kind of, um, it was a glass half full moment uh, situation for you and not a, a glass half half empty because you were able uh, to pivot and then yeah. start offering the online classes in addition to your in-person classes. Um, do you think that you would have even considered the idea of offering online classes had it not been for COVID? Absolutely not. Um, I think uh, I do have experience with doing online classes as an educator, but I've never thought about doing it as um, in fitness until this came about, you know, COVID. And so, um, and then now post COVID uh, or somewhat post COVID, um, I've kept that model. And I have people that still join online as well as an in person um, class. So, um, you'll find I have people that join from Texas, Florida, um, Memphis, um, Austin, um, Austin, Texas. I think I've mentioned that, but um, there are several different states that I have people joining CrunkFit from, and that opportunity would not have come about had I not met that adversity. So definitely. As a business person, you have to be willing to face those challenges and work around those challenges and use people around you to talk your ideas through so that you can kind of see which direction would be best and be okay with, you know, having failures here and there. That's a part of growth. Thank you for mentioning challenges, because I know for uh, for some people who want to be, you know, a part of a gym, a part of a have a, a trainer um, it's just not financially um, feasible for them for for a variety of reasons. And so um, is there something that they could be doing at home that's um, that's totally free. All they have to do is have the time, uh, the energy and the effort to do it. Um, what can someone do who's at home, wants to be physically engaged, physically active, but just does not have the financial means for a trainer or to join a gym? Well, one thing I would say is um, look at, um, you know, YouTube is a great option for just some general things that you could do at the house. Um, there's a lot of variety that's there. Um, there are a lot of gyms that are here in town that are offering an online model as well. So you might even want to Google that gym and see what that is. Um, Crumfit, we offer online classes, you know, and there are di several different areas that um, are several different programs that do offer the ability to do uh, online classes as well. So um, I would say definitely do that research. And if you uh, give me a moment, I'll show you a few things that you can do right here at the house and be able to um, get you a little bit of fitness in. And I call them commercial break movements. All right. So let's take a pause for the cause and get ready for our commercial break movement. All right, so, you know, as you're watching your show or as you're watching any kind of uh, thing that you, you love on TV, you can use your commercial breaks to do different types of movements. So one thing is if you have an ottoman or just your regular couch right there that you're sitting on, just have a seat. And the, as the commercial is playing, the commercial is about 30 seconds to a minute long. So you're just going to do your movements during your commercial break. So you just want to make sure that your feet are planted really well and you're just going to stand up and then just have a seat. Stand up and sit down. So these are nice little um, squats that you can do that are nice and modified. They're easy on the joints because you're not having to hold your weight up the whole time. So it's just like you're just standing up, getting ready to go do something and have a seat, okay? So another movement that you could do if you, uh, again, have an ottoman or right there on the edge of your couch, you just put your, make sure that your wrist is below your shoulders and just step your feet back and bring those knees in. So hold that core in, that helps control that core. 
It's also will uh, be a little bit of uh, work out on your arms as well and bringing those knees in, okay? And then you also can bring them to the side. That also helps open up those hips. One thing that I always tell my uh, class is that you gotta protect your joints, you gotta protect your body. It's the only one we have. So we have to make sure that we really do really well in protecting it. Um, also, sitting down on the edge, put your palms right next to your hips and then bring your hips barely off the couch to where your back is going to be brazing up against the back of the couch. And then you can do some arm dips. Mm -hmm. If you can only do two or three of them, perfectly fine. Do a couple of dips, bring yourself back up, shake that out, come right back into it. Do you a couple of dips, bring that back up and shake that out. So. These are moves that you can definitely do during a commercial break while you're sitting right there on the couch. And then if you again have, you know, those mobility issues, you can also hold a regular old plank right here on the couch by stepping your feet back and just holding that plank, holding that position. And you can do that during the commercial break, get you a full 30 seconds, get you a full minute or however that you want to do it. You can also uh, do a little arm work here. So I'm gonna just show you two more things and then um, I think that'll be good. One thing is, if you wanna do a few arm movements, you know, summertime's coming, you know, we like to wear our nice little tank tops and stuff. So um, <laughs> in that same position, you just basically drop it down and bring it up. Drop it down and bring it up. You can also come down to the elbows and come right back up in that position, down to the elbows, right back up in that position. Once you get tired, bring your feet in, bring your body up and shake it out. And then you can return right back into that position. So these are several movements that you can do right here at the house while you're watching TV, while you're um, watching your show or however, during those commercial breaks. Like I said, they're only 30 seconds, 60 seconds or so. So go ahead and, you know, try that out for yourself. I'm sure you'll feel a little burn as you go along. <laughs> I feel the burn just watching you. <laughs>Right. Thank you for showing us those uh, simple moves that can be modified for any fitness level. We do appreciate that, um, that the fact that anyone can move, like you've been saying this entire segment, anyone can move and you've shown us um, how we can move um, at home during those commercial breaks. And so um, if someone is looking for a trainer, or um, a gym to join, what things should they be thinking about? What things should they consider if they're um, trying to look for a trainer? One thing you have to do is know, you know, what personality you're looking for. All trainers are not alike. You know, you, a lot of times we get in our mind, the um, major pain, you know, like you're going to be yelling in your face type trainer. And a lot of us don't respond well to that. And that's perfectly fine. You want to find that trainer that um, you can really mesh with, that meshes with your personality. And so that might not be, you know, every trainer that's out there. You know, you want to think about your personality and match it with someone's personality that is going to be conducive for you because that's going to keep you coming. I know personally, I have um, had trainers that I've worked with in the past that I just didn't mesh well with because I don't like being yelled at. I'm not a yeller myself. I'm more of a motivator. Um, I help you see the uh, end goal and, and try to press you and get you to understand that you are strong enough to do these types of things that I'm asking you to do. And I get you to the point where you're able to do that. And I wouldn't ask anything of my um, participants until I know that they're physically able to do that. So you want to make sure that, you know, you have someone that is really good with your personality that's going to make you feel good when you go there and not just be like, oh, this is gonna be you know, horrible or however. You want it to be an enjoyable experience. So you know, definitely find someone that matches your personality the best way that you can. And speaking of matching personalities, let's just say that everyone who's tuning in and watching this segment decides, hey, I want to join Crunk Fitness. 
how do they reach out and <laughs> contact you so that they can join? What do they need to do? Well, they can look me up at www.crunkfit.com. That's K-R-U-N-K-F-I-T. And um, there are ways that you can reach out there. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram at Crunkfit. And you can join the page, like the page, and send me messages. I am very responsive. Any questions that you have, any anxieties that you have, feel free to bring them my way, and I will talk you through them. Um, whether you want to join online from the comfort of your home, and one thing, you do not have to have your camera on. So you can be joining us and not be seen at all if you're you know, shy about being seen. That's okay. Uh, so if you want to join online, we also uh, have classes Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at The Lot. The Lot is located over in North Little Rock. It's at 601 West 4th Street. Uh, we're in North Little Rock, cat corner from Dickie Stevens Park. You can literally walk from the park over to the building. And so um, whether you want to join in person or online, just reach out and we'll be more than happy to have you. On behalf of all women who um, do not feel comfortable exercising or being <laughs> active with the camera on, thank you for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. And, and speaking of women, you know, and, and men too, uh, we have women and men that come and you are more than welcome to bring your kids. That's one thing that I always say, you know, we have several kids that are, have now have their little crunk fit community of themselves that run around and play with each other and can't wait to see each other. So, you know, uh, I think uh, it's, you're breaking generational bonds when the, the child is able to see the parent doing something that uh, is positive and something that's beneficial to themselves. And you're, you know, gonna invest that into your own child. So I really encourage moms to bring your child on out and, you know, let them see, you know, some good fitness and some good positive fitness. Absolutely, absolutely. Ms. Bryant, thank you so much for sharing with us about your journey, about um, showing us some, some simple moves that we can do at the house and also inviting us to come out to the lot and even joining you online for classes. Thank you so much for sharing with me today. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you having me. Yes, ma'am, and that's a wrap. <laughs>